In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the current conditions, and we're going to be taking also another look at the upcoming pattern, where there is plenty of storms, a massive Arctic blast on the way for mid-March, it appears. There is so much to go over today, even potential snowfall, as March might go down as our most wintry month of the entire winter. And it's not even the winter, it's actually meteorological spring. Yesterday marked the first day of meteorological spring, and now we're in our, in our second day of meteorological spring today. We do have some showery activity up here in the northwest as we do have a cold front and occluded front there, as you can see, approaching. There is some high pressure to the south, which is keeping things pretty much dry to the south. Uh, we do have this big frontal boundary and a big storm system underneath here for Texas and New Mexico. As you can see, there's some pretty broad low pressure through here. The primary low, I think, is here over central uh, New Mexico there. And this is creating a big situation as we do just have these thunderstorms developing in here. Uh, we do actually expect some severe weather later on today. Uh, and that is already starting up as we have a moderate risk of severe weather and that's going to be mostly for these areas in here as you can see just west of dallas and fort worth in here we do have this line of severe thunderstorms already setting up there is some showers in the area and we did see that on the model guidance over the last few days as there is a stationary front overhead this is going to kind of work its way north and get out of here a little bit as those severe thunderstorms approach but this could be eating up some of the cape in these areas especially uh, where we see a lot of this precipitation not letting the sun get through also kind of decreasing the humidity and heat a little bit so there's multiple factors there we can see that as we work our way to the southeast there is also some showery activity in these areas in general uh, so showers even some thunderstorms perhaps here for northern Alabama uh, we definitely see a whole lot of that going on and then as we work our way towards the northeast we can just see a storm system moving through up here actually you know what? I just realized we don't have the precipitation typing on so let's just turn that on real quick because this could be snowfall yeah there you go so we have plenty of heavier snowfall happening up here uh, and as we work our way towards the west I want to see what yeah so this was all snowfall up here uh, that's what I figured it looked a little rainy to me a little bit warm for this time of year but yeah we have some snowfall showers up here for these areas here and what we're going to do actually is turn on the severe weather real quick so we can just take a look at uh, what we have coming up guys so here is our current severe weather risk as you can see we have it on screen here with the frontal boundaries and everything and as you can see we do have a moderate risk of severe weather for all of these red regions in here from fort worth and dallas all the way through tyler shreveport and into southern mostly south Western there, Arkansas as well. We have that moderate risk of severe weather. Outside of there, we do have this enha enhanced risk, excuse me, and even here, a slight risk for an even larger area. And then in general, we expect severe weather to be possible for all of these areas, dark green uh, into the yellow, orange, and even red. Today looks like a particularly dangerous day, so we're going to be watching very closely for this again, especially from Fort Worth through Dallas into uh, Texarkana, even in through near uh, Pine Bluff and Hot Springs there in, in Arkansas and Shreveport northward. We're going to be watching all of those areas in particular for this bad, bad, bad and severe weather event here today. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on and talk about our model guidance. Now, here we are taking a look at things. This is our model guidance. We're just getting into it. And you guys will not believe how cold things look once we move through with this. We can see that by the time we're reaching this evening, we have plenty of these thunderstorms taking place in here. This is certainly going to be a very dangerous situation. Our low located right around there. Certainly going to be a very bad day for severe weather, in my opinion, and most everybody's opinion. Uh, we can see that as we work up into uh, Ohio here with the low in 981, we do see heavy snowfall developing here for some of the Ohio Valley and Northeast. This is certainly a very interesting situation. We see this low transfer offshore by the time we're taking a look at about midday Saturday, two days from now, and we're going to have heavy snowfall from New York through New England. And this low is pretty darn close to the coast. So we are going to be seeing potential for sleet or rain there on the southern extent of things. But for further north and further west in New England and in the northeast, I think this is going to be a very large snowstorm indeed. Now we do get a much smaller uh, kind of snowstorm here as a low moves underneath. We get some snow showers there for the northeast. And really we're left with a very similar pattern through the ninth that we've been seeing. Kind of this trough out west, mostly a ridge in the east and more stormy in the east in general. Things get quieter out west as you can see by the time reaching mid-March. But look at this by the time reaching the 10th, 11th, 12th. Look at what we get guys. 
a major positive PA pattern. This is what we've been waiting for all winter long. Look at that massive trough, huge polar vortex level Arctic blast, really, here, uh, and a massive snowstorm along the northeast there. A 978 millibar low pressure center there offshore of New England as we reach this extreme cooldown. This is just going to be a very interesting pattern, and we see this continue on. Uh, through all the way into at least the 12th here at the end of the model run. Now, the interesting thing here, guys, is I don't know about you guys, but in Virginia, everything is blooming. All the plants think that it's literally April right now, uh, and we're talking, you know, early to mid-March. I have no idea what this looks like once we see a hard freeze potentially come through. I've been kind of dreading this, and I don't know what that means for nature in general, as nature has been a bit confused, just like, you know, the weather has been. Uh, definitely going to be interested to see how that plays out, but I think there's some implications there for sure. We can see that based on the total precipitation, we see the northwest is getting quite a bit of storminess moving onshore still through the next 10 days. North or southwest here kind of gets left high and dry, and then we see a lot of these storms redeveloping, heading through some areas like this. I see some like this, it appears, maybe some storm systems moving through here. This is definitely going to be a very active pattern in the east. Not only are we expecting to be very cold, but very, very stormy. Even severe weather on the way for some of these areas as well. Very interesting pattern again that we find ourselves in. Now more snowfall is expected uh, for the northwest, the Rockies, and some of the Sierra Nevadas as well here. But we can see this transitions right through into the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and northeast here where we get this pocket of heavy snowfall as well. I would say the amount of snowfall happening where I'm Xing here is about the same amount that we're seeing through here as well. A little bit more widespread here in the eastern side of things, but perhaps a little bit more in the highest mountaintops here out west. So, but it's pretty even, and I can't say that for many 10-day periods this winter. I think that this would be the first 10-day period where we're seeing a pretty even west to coast, west coast, east coast kind of snowfall numbers that we're seeing here it looks very very similar uh, now the gfs model we're going to work our way through this one but i also see this one bringing in that cold air right around the 10th time frame here we can see a deep uh ridge developing here over the west here and our jet stream is clearly doing this so i think frigid air is on the way here for a time right around uh your march 10th time frame there and again major implications are going to come with that as all the plants seem to think that it is already uh, well into spring. We do see a snowstorm develop here around the 16th, some colder air around for the east. And honestly, we're looking at the 18th of March here at the end of the model run, and I'm still seeing a positive PNA look, which is going to mean more cold on the way for the east. So this cold is going to continue to pour into the east here on the GFS model. Certainly something to pay attention to and something to be slightly concerned about, I would say, for the plants. Uh, I hope nobody started their gardens. I know it's been nice, but you know, you never know when a freeze or a frost is going to happen. It certainly can't be ruled out ever. Uh, and then our European ensemble model here, as we just continue this on, we see that we're starting out warm in the east. This is what we've been dealing with all the way through the 7th of March here. You could tell that everything west of that line is cold. Everything east of that line is very warm. That is what we've been dealing with all winter long. And then by the time we reach all the way towards the end of the model run, you can see we continue to trend more and more cold air shifting eastward all the way through the 17th of March here at the end of this European Ensemble model run. Definitely a very, very interesting and very concerning look. We're going to continue to update you guys every single day, so be sure to tune in daily as we do upload every single day. You can also subscribe to this pop-up in your subscription box. Even hit the bell icon for daily notifications so you never miss one. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.